Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. We have finally another unboxing. We have two aircraft here, um, one in each box. Um, I've actually had this box for quite a long time. You've probably seen this from some other uh, videos in the background and stuff, but I, I wanted to unbox these together because these are kind of like, these kind of go together. You'll see what I mean when I get them out. But they're both the kind of, they're not the same aircraft, they're just the same kind of aircraft, if that makes sense. And I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but that is a uh, Chinook. And yeah, so with that other way, we're just going to go ahead and unbox these um, aircraft. Um, yeah, so this one is from eBay. Uh, this one is actually from Waffle Collectibles in America. Um, I tend to not order from Waffle Collectibles or any American sites because obviously there's the shipping and the customs charges and all of that. And this one was a little bit more expensive because of that, but it was the only uh, place I could find it. So I decided to just go for it. Uh, this one, as I said, was from eBay. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to... Um, I don't know which one I should unbox first. I think okay, I'm gonna flip a coin and because I don't have an actual coin with me I'm just gonna use Siri. So this will be heads. This will be tails flip a coin Heads heads. Okay, so I guess we're unboxing this one first I'll bring this to the front put that one at the back and we're gonna go ahead and unbox this now what I think I'm going to do to um, kind of uh, separate these uh, models out, I'm going to completely unbox this and go through this in detail. Then after that, I'm going to unbox this one. So that's what we're going to do. Um, this one, uh, where's this is very tightly packed as well. Okay, and that is open. And again, this is so tightly packed. Got some uh, newspaper in here. And then look at that. Look how tightly packed that box is. Literally got to get a crowbar to get that out. That is very nicely wrapped as well in uh, newspaper as well. This is from Waffle Collectibles, as I said. So uh, well done on the uh, packaging, I guess. Um, Waffle Collectibles. And here we have the model. And so to start out with here, we have the uh, Royal Air Force uh, A330 MRTT. Uh, MRTT stands for Multi-Role Tanker Transport. And this is the RAF Voyager. Now I know what a lot of you are probably thinking, why did I buy this? Uh, Voyager has just gotten a new livery. I have also ordered the new Voyager in a couple scales. The reason why I did get this is, well, of course this is Voyager, but the RAF do have 14 of these A330 MRTTs. I believe this is the Voyager, the registration that did get painted. However, I decided to get it because A, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a history aircraft in a sense, you know, it's part of the Royal Air Force's history and I do also have the uh, C1K, I'm actually going to get that. A lot of you probably remember this aircraft from a lot of my updates, I have two of these. Uh, this is the C1K based off of the uh, VC-10 um, and this is actually, this was retired in 2013 and this is the basically the old Voyager in a sense. This is the aircraft that um, took the role of the Voyager before the Voyager came into the RAF fleet um, and it's, it's nice to have the progression, you know, I've got the old one, I've got this one and then eventually I'll have the new livery one, um, so yeah, it's 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 partly that and also um, it's just a cool livery even though it's you know very boring in a sense gray it's it's quite nice it's it's a lot more military and also um, as I said the uh, RAF do actually have multiple of the A330 MRTTs the RAF have 14 of these one of course is the Voyager that did get painted into the new livery uh, but they do have Again, another 13 of these kind of in the gray kind of livery, um, even though I do believe this is the registration that it get painted, but you know, who cares? <laughs> This is also my very first Aviation 400 model, so I'm very excited about that. I've heard some amazing things about Aviation 400. Um, I did actually order the uh, British Airways A350-1000, however the uh, 
order that I did give was on eBay and it turned out that that model was broken and so I didn't actually, I wasn't able to get that in the end. But moving on to the box, you can see it's a very kind of uh, simple box. It's got a grey background with the uh, clip art on the front, Royal Air Force uh, Airbus A330 MRTT scale uh, manufacturer and then on the side we've got some various things. Um, that's a little sticker from... Um, the uh, Waffle Collectibles, I guess. Then we've got more of the clip art on the side there with the Royal Air Force logo. Got more on the side there, just a, a picture of the interior of the uh, Voyager. And then we've got the Royal Air Force and various other things on the side like that. Aviation 400 did also release the uh, Singapore and Australian Air Force uh, A330 MRTT because they do also have uh, this type of aircraft in their fleet and um, I just decided to go to, for the Royal Air Force one because, well, I'm British and so I thought, you know, kind of makes sense and plus for a UN, this does come to Washington Dulles whenever the uh, UN day um, takes place in DC. But without further ado, I guess we're just gonna go ahead and unbox this aircraft now. Um, and it's a lot like uh, NG models with this uh, polystyrene. Uh, the difference is, oh, and that is a landing gear that's just fallen out of the aircraft. Hopefully that's fixable though. But yeah, looking down here at the model, you can see this is the uh, landing gear that did, just did fall off, but hopefully that's that looks gluable. Um, it's a bit of a shame about that. And not a very good impression of Aviation 400 to start out with, but there we go. I'm gonna take the aircraft out of the box now. And apart from that broken landing gear, okay, the engines are a little bit, okay, that engine. Okay, yeah, this isn't a very good first impression of Aviation 400. I'm gonna put this down and show you all of these um, uh, defects. Okay, little uh, little editor's note here, and I thought it's actually worth noting. Uh, a, I've managed to fix the model now. You can see the engines are. I've managed to. It's almost. It's still a little bit off. I'm. I'm still working on that. I'm just applying pressure slowly but surely. I've also glued the landing gear on, and it's actually coming along pretty well. Um, the other thing I thought I actually might mention is this is actually. I didn't actually check this because I'm stupid. Uh, but this is actually Zulu Zulu three three three, and the Voyager that did actually get painted was Zulu Zulu three three six. So this uh, particular Voyager is actually still in this livery. It was actually uh, Zulu Zulu 336 that got painted into that new livery um, because the RF actually have 14 of these. Only one is painted into that new special livery. So this one is actually still valid and I can actually still say that this is realistic. So I'm pretty pleased about that. But yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna get back to the unboxing. Okay, so to start out with, we've got the uh, landing gear. Um, on the on the floor here uh, this is this came off the aircraft and as well you can see uh, the engine on the side here is bent upwards quite a lot um, I'll try and I'll try and fix that I guess but it's it's not looking too good I have to I have to be honest the landing gear isn't really a problem I can just glue that in like that as you can see uh, but the engine it doesn't seem uh, fixable it's uh, I guess I could bend it down a bit and I'll try my best to see if I can fix that but we'll have a we'll have a look at the model anyway okay and having a closer look at this model now you can see starting off the front here we've got the uh, cockpit windows and we've got of course it'd be on the other side we've got the L1 door here the L2 door um, the service doors I guess you could say and then we've got this uh, kind of gray color but we've got this gray line going underneath the windows and then we've got kind of like a, a zigzag bit coming under here and following onto the nose got the RAF logo of course there the antennas are very good as well as the uh, beacon lights on the top here you can see they're very nice as well they're actually kind of like these are almost like tiny little gems in a way. Um, that's quite cool. I haven't really seen that on many other uh, models, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, the antennas are done very well. It's just a shame about the engines of the landing gear because, um, as I said, this is a very bad first impression of Aviation 400, but I've heard some very good things about uh, Aviation 400 in the past. Moving back here uh, to the wing and the engine, uh, the engine looks very close to the ground which isn't a good thing at all. Uh, that may be due to the fact uh, the other side is messed up so it's kind of um, wonky. Um, it might be you know, a bit better once I've fixed the landing gear on the other side but I'll have a look uh, when that's all fixed. We have the uh, wings here and then these down here if it will focus. Uh, these are the uh, tanker pods I think they, these are. Uh, these are where the um, 
the uh, tanker uh, pipes kind of come out of the back there uh, for uh, whatever to be refueled. Um, I believe uh, the wings are only uh, refuelable for like fighter jets and smaller aircraft like that. When it comes down to the bigger aircraft like the uh, C-17s, the Air 400s, uh, that would have to be the main pod out of the uh, uh, main uh, fuselage of the aircraft. Then here as you can see it says Royal Air Force, uh, we've got more of the windows, more of that grey line coming back and then moving back to the uh, rear of the aircraft. We've got the uh, grey tail, you can see why they made the new livery because this is just a bit you know, boring. The new livery looks insanely good um, and this one is a little bit boring let's be honest but we have the little uh, um, RAF kind of um, insignia thing with the uh, the uh, blue and the red and this is kind of a, a thing on most RAF aircraft. I'll see if it has it on the um, yeah on the uh, C1K here as you can see it's only very small but every RAF aircraft, I'll try and stop my hands from shaking there, uh, but every RAF aircraft has that kind of little uh, blue and red little mark. Um, and you can see on this aircraft you can see the blue and red mark is just there. And just like that, that does conclude um, the uh, Voyager. A little bit disappointed, especially as I spent uh, a considerable amount of money on this aircraft, um, getting it imported from the US. Um, all, all in all, this aircraft was probably about uh, 95 pounds I think it was uh, with the import tax, the shipping and the actual model itself. Uh, a bit disappointed, I don't know whether this is the fault of um, Aviation 400 um, or uh, Waffle Collectibles or even uh, DHL who shipped this to me. You can always tell when it's the manufacturer's fault because other people will also receive this broken and um, I haven't heard much about this um, being broken from other people so I'm kind of leaning more towards the fact that this is either DHL's fault or Waffle Collectibles uh, fault. Um, I'm not really sure though um, just because I've heard some very good things about Aviation 400 in the past and I, I don't think they would kind of settle for a model like this um, but yeah we'll put this off to the side and get out my next model and hopefully this one won't be broken. And so unboxing the next aircraft here. This aircraft I got yesterday. I do also have another box I need to unbox, but I thought I'd save that for another unboxing because this one, I already have two aircraft in this unboxing, so um, I'll keep it for a next one. But in here we also have another military model. Uh, it's also uh, RAF, and this is a model that a lot of you have wanted me to get for a very long time, and this box is full of packing peanuts. And so after we've dug out our model, you can see it is the, you can see that the model is the Royal Air Force A400M by Gemini Max. I know a lot of people have wanted me to get this model for a very long time. Uh, when I did that three part unboxing of um, the C5 Galaxy, the um, Doomsday aircraft and the Antonov uh, 225, I know a lot of people were guessing that this was gonna be the third part of the unboxing. However, it wasn't, it was the uh, a, uh, Antonov uh, 225. However, I do finally have this. The reason why I didn't get this when it originally came out is I was thinking, you know, uh, if Gemini Jets are gonna release this one, they'll probably release the uh, Luftwaffe A400M and the Luftwaffe A400M does come to Dallas occasionally. The uh, Royal Air Force one does not. However, I decided in the end to get this uh, because I am trying to build up my military fleet of aircraft um, as you can probably see by the uh, Voyager behind there um, and so I'll probably get the Luftwaffe A400M if that does come out as well as this one. The A400M if you don't know this is actually my favorite military cargo aircraft over the C5 Galaxy, the C130, the C5 whatever, um, anything like that, the C17 or whatever. Um, this is my favorite uh, military cargo aircraft. It was first flown in 2009, however, it was introduced to the French Air Force, I believe, in 2013. Um, the RAF uh, currently have 20 of these in their fleet. Uh, they do have two more on order to bring their total up to 22 aircraft. And um, these are actually set to be replacing the RAF's aging uh, C-130s. Uh, the C-130s, uh, the RAF actually have 24 of them. Uh, they are gonna be re uh, retired by 2022. Um, and these are going to operate alongside the RAF's existing eight C-17s. Um, I actually saw one of those C-17s in Abuja in Nigeria when I landed in my uh, Lufthansa A330, uh, uh, sorry. Um, 
there was something very, I don't know, something very satisfying about seeing, you know, the uh, RAF uh, C-17 in such a foreign country. You know, it was such a, a strange experience for me going to uh, like a country like Nigeria. And it was, it was quite pleasing in a way to see, you know, an RAF C-17 sitting at Abuja. Um, it was like a, a piece of home in a sense. And it was the same feeling when I saw um, a 777-300 at Sao Paulo. It seems odd saying that, but just the way I went down to Brazil, I actually flew across to like America with family and then flew down to Brazil from there. It felt like a very long way away from home and seeing like a British Airways 777, it was just, it was very pleasing. It's almost like a part of home is there with you. And you know, that's what that's one thing about aviation that's just so, so like, you know, fascinating. As well, the A400M, I have actually seen this uh, multiple times at both uh, the Farnborough Air Show and Fairford Air Show. These are incredible aircraft. The RAF are actually the fourth largest operators of the A400M in the world after France, Spain and Germany. However, France, Spain and Germany don't have the C-17, so it kind of, you know, levels out with the RAF having the C-17. Back to the uh, uh, A330 MRTT, the RAF are the largest operators of the uh, MRTT in the world. They have 14 of these, however, France are set to beat the RAF. Uh, they've ordered uh, 15 of them, so they're going to beat the RAF by one... Uh, A330 MRTT. But back to the A400M now, and this is the classic uh, Gemini Max box. You can see we've got this kind of metal grid color. I know I keep on saying this, but it would be cool to see, even if it was just like a solid gray color, I'm just not a fan of this, you know, kind of metal pattern. It just seems very, you know, kind of 2000s kind of animation type, you know, skill. I mean, if they if they released a box like this, even though this is more, you know, kind of bland and a bit more basic, this just looks a lot better than this mess of a box. Like, it'd just be cool, even if you kept all of this, just replace the metal kind of look behind there with just some kind of like light gray or something like that. In my opinion, that would just look a lot better. You don't need to see around the box. It's literally the same as every other Gemini Jets aircraft, but inside here you can see we have have the model and it looks pretty good uh, doesn't seem to be broken which is a very good sign the a400m is literally like if the c130 had a baby with a c17 it's kind of in that kind of um, size it's a bit smaller than the c17 a bit larger than the c130 it's got props instead of engines like the c17 has but without further ado we're gonna go ahead and unbox this model And opening it up now, you can see we've got the uh, plastic on there. Uh, very nice, you know, uh, always appreciate that. And taking the model out of the box now, I've heard some pretty good things about this model. Uh, it's it's very detailed and wow, that is very nice from Gemini Jets. I have to be honest about this. You know, Gemini Jets has done a very nice job on this model. And yes, I am giving Gemini Jets praise towards this model. If they release a good model, I will give them praise towards it. If they release a bad model, I will not, it's as simple as that. But going into detail on this model now, I'm gonna put this off to the side there like that, and then we're gonna zoom in on the model. Okay, and now going into this model in detail, the focus is being a bit glitchy, but there we go. You can see at the front of the aircraft here, we've got the black nose of the aircraft. I've got the cockpit windows there, as well as some uh, small little details, as well as the uh, Royal Air Force uh, titles there. Um, and then moving down, we've got the, uh, the door. Uh, towards the front of the aircraft there with the uh, forward landing gear as well. I believe these do not roll. Let me just double check on that. Yep, I can confirm these uh, landing gear do not roll, which isn't a bad thing. This is one thing I wish Gianna Jets would take away from this is that having non-rolling landing gear isn't a bad thing. I feel like they're trying to, you know, advance their models so much and get them with all rolling landing gear and then it all messes up and then they get criticism. Just don't, for me anyway, I, I don't mind having non-rolling landing gear. It's not like people are gonna be rolling these about anyway. It's not really that big of a deal. Then moving back to these uh, props now. Um, these do spin, of course, as you can see. They do spin like that. Uh, very similar to the uh, C-130. The C-130 does also have spinning 
um, props as well. These are a little bit larger than the uh, C130 props as well. Um, four of them, of course. So this is a lot more of a uh, a lot more powerful than the uh, C130. Then back here, as you can see, the landing gear. We have uh, three abreast uh, landing gear, almost kind of similar to the uh, C1 uh, C17 rather. Although the C17, I believe, only has a two sets, it does have a three in one kind of um, set, if that makes sense. Like here, as you can see, this the uh, C17. Uh, it's only got two kind of sets along there, but it's got three kind of one, two, three along that way. So it's kind of like it's kind of spaced them out um, opposite directions. So instead of having three along that way, you've got three along that way and just two um, kind of diagonally. If that makes sense in any way, shape, or form. And then moving back here, you can see we've got the uh, other door here. This is actually where, if you've ever seen uh, Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation, this is where. Um, what's his face? Tom Cruise, that's it, Tom Cruise. This is where Tom Cruise was hanging off um, when they did a Rogue Nation. If you haven't seen Rogue Nation, you probably won't understand what I'm talking about. Uh, but they actually, uh, for Rogue Nation, as an actual live stunt, it wasn't like CGI or anything, but they actually attached uh, Tom Cruise to uh, this part of the aircraft here and actually took it flying as well. Um, it's a pretty insane stunt, but you know, that's uh, Mission Impossible for you. Going to the back of the aircraft now, I was just kind of seeing if the uh, back does open. Um, now you can see here that it does have like an indent uh, suggesting that it does open but I've tried to kind of um, kind of claw it out a bit and it doesn't seem to want to open and um, it does kind of look like it would open but again I've tried briefly and I don't want to break it so um, uh, it might open it might not open um, I don't know about that but then finally moving to the back of the aircraft now you can see we've got the uh, uh, main uh, kind of gray area and then we've got that Royal Air Force kind of uh, logo piece on there and that does conclude this unboxing to recap we've got the RF Voyager uh, broken by uh, Aviation 400 I'm gonna have a gut fixing that after this video I'll see if it's uh, redeemable and I'll probably give you a uh, um, an update on this uh, in my next video or something like that. I'll see when that uh, comes up, but we'll see about that. Um, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm still hopeful about this model. The engine is the more worrying thing than the landing gear. The landing gear can just stick back on. The engine, I'm not sure if that's going to be fixable. So um, we're going to have a look at that. But the uh, Gemini Max A400M, very, very nice model. I would definitely buy more of these. So when they do release the um, Luftwaffe, even the uh, French Air Force or anything like that, I probably might try and buy. Um, I, I'm definitely going to try and get the Luftwaffe one because that does come to Dulles. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at the French Air Force and Spanish Air Force and anything like that. Um, I'll see when that comes out because I am trying to build up my uh, military collection of aircraft. I do want to get some more uh, C-130s um, and diff different things like that. I do want to get an RAF um, C-17 as well, as well as more uh, C-17s as well. I do currently have two C-17s which are in the same... Um, they're the same C-17s in a sense, so they're not... Um, any different. I'm gonna see if they do like a Dover C-17. I believe uh, Dover does have some C-17s based at Dover So I'll see if I can get one of them, but if not, I'll see if I can get any more uh, USAF C-17s and as well as I said a RAF uh, C-17, but we'll have a look at that. But apart from that, that does conclude this unboxing I hope you did enjoy and I will see you in the next one Bye